Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So I've got a little follow-up um, kind of review um, and also some advice and observations on the Dynasty Forge Bastard Sword. So first off, just whack this out of the vise. Notice I've got these uh, magnetic uh, grip, don't know what they're called actually, faces basically to the vise. Uh, they're made of some kind of tough rubber. Great for gripping blades if you want to do some work on the hilt, maintenance, cleaning, whatever. Um, now, and I will actually, I'll put a link to these below because they're really worthwhile. It was years before I found that they existed, so I used to mess around with bits of wood and stuff, but these are really, really great. Anyway, on to the sword. So, first of all, I should say that uh, I still really like this um, bastard sword from Dynasty Forge. The blade geometry on it is lovely, really, really nice. Um, I have cut with it quite a few times um, since uh, last the time I did the review basically. So I have uh, waved it around quite a lot and I have cut with it a fair amount. It still does need, as far as I'm concerned, some final work on the um, edges. I don't believe that the edges are quite where I'd want them to be for ideal cutting, but nevertheless, it does cut through most mediums pretty well, um, but it's not, you notice I can do this to the edge, it's not what I would call the final kind of polished edge that I would like. Um, so overall, I still really, really like this sword. I still rate it. I still, for the price, I do recommend it. Um, but it, as I said in the main review, it does have a few issues. I'm not that keen on the finish of the leather, although it's quite nice. It does at least have a cord uh, wrap underneath the leather, so it's quite nice. It's very nicely stitched. I think I just personally find the leather a little bit too shiny, but that's a minor uh, detail. The uh, hilt fittings are nicely shaped, nicely formed, uh, but what I would say is they have a bit of a modern uh, metal look to them. They look, I think they probably are stainless steel. They certainly look like it. Um, so they do look a little bit, I think, you know, mild steel fittings would look nicer personally, aesthetically look a bit more historical. Um, but again, that's a relatively uh, minor point. And one of the nice things about the Dynasty Forge um, European swords is that they uh, do have dismountable hilts. And that's what I'm going to be talking about here. Um, so you could use these as a customization project. You could put a different cross guard I personally prefer straight cross guards um, but you could put a different cross guard on there you could put a different pommel on there uh, so that's that's uh, kind of up to you the blade itself is a very good basis and a very nice blade for the money uh, certainly up there with some of the best quality uh, blades that that money can buy in terms of the edge geometry and the shapes I can't speak that much about the heat treatment it, it hasn't suffered any any kind of uh, edge um, damage or um, you know bends or anything like that so um, uh, functionally for me for what I've used it for it's been perfect but what I'm going to talk about here is actually the uh, hilt construction and this was one of the main uh, kind of uh, constructive points I suppose maybe criticisms depending how you frame it um, that I put towards the Dynasty Forge European swords or at least the ones that I've got and that is the hilt construction and they are um, they do have a threaded uh, nut um, but there's, uh, we're, we're going to look at that now. Now, one of the issues, why is that an issue? Well, theoretically, it's not an issue. I have no problem with uh, threaded tangs. I have no problem with having a nut at the end. A lot of my training swords have that. It means you can tighten them up or you can dismount them or whatever. You can replace parts more easily, customize them. So, so long as that's done well, I don't have a problem with it. However, with the Dynasty Forge swords, I have noticed a problem that with use, it could be to do with compression of the wood or other things, with use, you do end up with a little bit of movement in the pommel. Uh, and with a sword where if you're doing Fury or Vardy as I do, then if you're encountering that pommel, if you're not gripping it at all and you're gripping it like um, some of the German sources would say, then it might not be so much of an issue. But if you're gripping the sword down here and encountering the pommel quite a lot, then movement in that pommel is really disturbing. And it also just, it feels horrible when you're cutting because you feel there's movement in here. Theoretically, there's a little bit of energy lost to to um, you know, vibration and movement down here. So basically, it's not nice having a pommel that ends up with movement, uh, and that is the case with these, uh, and uh, that is the product of the way that this is put together, which we're gonna look at now. So first thing I would say is, um, you know, clamp your sword up if you're doing any kind of work on the hilt. Make, watch out for where the blade is sticking. Be careful not to spike your foot on the bottom end. Exercise all the normal safety uh, precautions that you normally would. And remember, you've now got a heavy object clamped to a sharp object, which, uh, as far as your body's concerned, is potentially dangerous. Okay, now, the issue that we've got here is that this nut 
at the top is completely cylindrical um, so therefore it's difficult to grip onto but if you look at certain other makes they stand a bit more proud so they've got more friction you've got more surface area to grip against you could use pliers or certain types of wrench uh, to grab onto them but this actually has been done aesthetically really nicely because it looks like a little peen uh, rivet top so it looks like a peen tang um, but it is in fact a recessed nut um, and we need to be able to get enough purchase on that in order, to, in order to either tighten it up or unscrew it depending on whether you want to dismount the hilt or tighten it up and it's really difficult to do without damaging either the pommel or the nut so there are various different tools that I will use to tighten up nuts or remove nuts on the end of swords um, a little insight into my life here I suppose um, and you know we've got the obvious types of pliers the problem with pliers of course is they scour the surface they maybe damage the surface of the pommel um, all of the usual kind of uh, caveats and warnings that you'd put in with using pliers to do this kind of job. Um, what I do to mitigate that or at least to in fact just stop that happening is a little strip of leather. This is a just a nice piece of uh, flexible leather that you wrap around the nut and then you grip the, um, grip the pliers over the top of the leather. Um, but uh, in this case, there's simply not enough vertical height of nut to grip onto. So the problem is, is it always just pops off. There's, the, there's nothing there. I bought this pair of Japanese uh, nylon um, faced pliers the, um, from Amazon. And um, unfortunately, they have proven to be almost useless. I've used them for a few jobs, but the problem is the nylon is... Uh, kind of like it, 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 it compresses and kind of deforms and in fact it's got some sort of uh, almost flashing uh, where it's kind of peeling off the edge from from pressure but uh, when you're using it against steel what tends to happen you squeeze really hard because you need to apply force and the nylon just kind of gives way so actually these have been on paper they seem like a great idea but they just don't work very well um, I have also used the um, adjustable wrench here it is couldn't find it for a second there adjustable wrench and that works if this is not perfectly cylindrical so if it's got a slight oval shape to it then this adjustable wrench and it's smooth faced as well will actually uh, grip on enough and then you can turn and you get quite a lot of leverage if that's perfectly cylindrical of course it just spins around um, so it's really really difficult obviously there are various other there are different types of pliers some of them have a little smooth face down here so you won't scour the surface and if you can get onto the top like that rather than doing it sideways do it on the top you can apply enough pressure to take the nut off but uh, so I have to experiment with all my set suppliers all my different wrenches and stuff that I've got and you never know which one's going to work for a different uh, project as it turns out these needle nose pliers so you will notice that often you have a uh, focus on the pliers for a second you often have a circular section in here in pliers and um, in, in this case that just so happens to be the right size in order to grip this nut so I can apply enough pressure squeezing there and it doesn't damage either the surface of the nut or the surface of the pommel and I can unscrew the thing or tighten it up but for the purposes of this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew the nuts totally so you can see how the Dynasty Forge uh, bastard sword is actually constructed so hopefully you can see this clearly enough for now it is a recessed nut um, which looks like that um, and it so it goes down just focus on the nut rather than my face there we go so it's a uh, nut that goes down inside the pommel and actually gives quite a long um, quite a long area of toothed contact threaded contact um, to hold on to the pommel now if we put that nut somewhere safe I'll just put it on my weighing scales down there and then we take the pommel off and I have to give it a little bit of a little bit of a wiggle and then it pops straight off. Right, so let's have a little look at this um, actual construction. Let's zoom in. So there we go, that's what was under the pommel. I can't say it's particularly tidy. So what you see, this white stuff you see here is glue, um, some sort of epoxy I imagine, and then the uh, grip is being cut square to fit inside uh, a recess in the pommel, which I'll show you now. Uh, so here is the uh, pommel recess so you can see that the 
pommel goes on like that. Now, I, I have to confess, I have um, had to dismantle and reconstruct one of the other Dynasty Forge swords, the uh, Chinese Jian, and um, it, that was constructed slightly differently. So the, the Jian was actually constructed like some uh, military sabers are, in that there was another nut down here. This one doesn't have that at all, but the Jian has a nut there which compresses and basically holds the grip and the guard onto the tang. And then there's a, the secondary nut, the external nut you can see, just holds the pommel on. In the case of this one, the only thing holding that whole hilt on is just that recessed nut at the end, um, which is fine. I'm not saying that that's uh, not adequate, but it is very difficult to tighten up considering it's the only nut holding everything on. So I hadn't taken this apart off camera or anything like that. I'm not, um, uh, you know, I'm not uh, pretending any of this. It's the first time I've taken this sword uh, pommel off. Make sure it's tightly clamped. Um, so I had expected there to be an internal nut based on the fact that I'd seen an internal nut on the uh, GN. Um, but there isn't an internal nut on this, so there's no nut for me to tighten up. Everything is held securely on here. Uh, by virtue of the fact that there's epoxy there, which stops me removing the stuff, or at least stops me removing it very easily, or possibly even non-destructively. I've got to say that's slightly annoying, uh, because this guard has some movement in it. Um, that means that it's difficult for me to compress the um, grip down to tighten up the guard, because it's been glued to the tang, as far as I can tell. What I'm gonna do, um, cautiously, just grab my rubber mallet, is I'm going to give some taps on the guard just to see if um, there's any way of uh, creating any movement up or down in the grip. And it doesn't look like, oh, maybe there is a little bit. Um, yeah, so if, I mean, I don't need to remove anything for now. It's not like I want to replace the guard or the grip. So really I just want to compress that construction down enough that it um, holds everything more securely on the tang. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the um, pommel on, correct way around. Um, so there we go. And I'm just going to beat on it with my rubber mallet. That's made not the slightest bit of difference at all, I have to say. No, it hasn't tightened that guard up at all. So I'm going to try something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to use a metal hammer and I'm going to put just a little batten of, uh, just a little batten of wood in there. No, I'm just going to tighten the sword up in the clamp, in the vise. Let's try again. Maybe a tiny bit tighter. Anyway, there we go. That's the um, that's the problem with, in this case, having a nut construction where it's not very easy to tighten the nut, and then putting epoxy in the construction of the hilt, so you can't tighten up the hilt properly if it gets loose because of compression of the wood. But the wood's not moving anywhere um, in relation to the tang, so you can't tighten it up again. Really, quite frustrating, actually. I've got to say, because it's a very, very, very nice blade that is, to me, ruined a little bit by the hilt construction. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna put this nut back on and just do it as tight as I possibly can and see if that makes any difference. It's possible just by clamping it down. But like I say, with this particular nut, there's not very much surface area to work against and it's completely cylindrical as well. So trying to get, uh, it's basically a feat of grip strength. Uh. Well, the pommel's certainly tight now. No, there's no difference to the guard at all. There's still a bit of movement in the guard, which is frankly annoying. <sighs> no. So anyway, there we go. I'm not gonna. Um, I'm not gonna go at it anymore. But that is the. Let me get the sword out. Is that is the downside to 
this type of construction and the Dynasty Forge uh, bastard sword, I'm afraid, there is only one nut holding everything uh, to the tang. That nut's not very easy to either get undone or to tighten up. And there's epoxy put into the grip so that if you end up with a bit of movement in the guard, as you, I'm trying to see if, I, if you can hear, and you kind of hear that, it's just, it's kind of slightly loose. It's only a tiny bit of movement, it's like a millimetre each way, but that's, you know, enough to cause vibrations when you're cutting or uh, using the sword. So I can't tighten this up because tightening that up doesn't move the grip because it's been glued. Um, so there we go. Um, this is a sort of, I suppose, an appendix, uh, an additional review uh, for the Dynasty Forge Bastard Sword, uh, this is the down point of this sword, is the hilt construction. What would I suggest? Well, first of all, don't epoxy the grip. There's just no reason to do that. If the hilt construction's good, don't glue the grip onto the tang. It just makes everything more difficult. Um, so, personally, I would say don't epoxy the grip and rethink how that is attached at the end of the tank. If you're going to use a nut, it needs to be a nut that's easier to tighten up or to take off. The other option is to do what they've done with their GN and that's have an internal nut and an external nut. So the external nut's only holding the pommel and the internal nut is what tightens up the hilt construction. That's the other option. That was done with certain military swords. Wilkinson used to do that in the 19th century and 20th century as well. Um, so that's the other option. And finally, the other option is to just peen the whole thing. Just peen it solid, um, like you know other manufacturers, some quite high-end ones do. Anyway, there we go. I hope that's been useful and interesting. See you again. Uh, give us a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you again on Scholar Gladiatoria channel for another video really soon. Cheers, folks.